welcome to a new episode of Ment. I'm Ritvika Gupta reporting from home. Today we begin the episode on a somber note. Chandramoli Venkatesan passed away on 6th October 2020. He was the CEO of Special Projects at PD Light Industries Limited and had previous stints at Mondelez India, Onida and Asian Paints. In recent years, Molly, as he was affectionately known, had turned author with management books Catalyst and Get Better at Getting Better. Our thoughts go out to his family and friends. Here is a short clip from an interview we had recorded in January 2019 with Chandra Moli Venkatesan. We are communicators in a manner of speaking. Fundamentally, book is another form of communication, right? You are expressing yourself. Um, so I think there is a, there is a willingness to communicate. Uh, there is also a comfort level with the mess of the process because a communication process is messy. You take two steps forward, one step backward. Sometimes you create, you break what you create and start again. So I think some of that comfort level and, and, and the willingness to go through that journey is possibly much higher. This week we are once again continuing our coverage from ZMELT 2020 and today we are going to present highlights from a presentation by Laura Jordan Bambach, Chief Creative Officer at Grey London. Before joining Grey London in May 2020, Laura co-founded the creative agency Mr. President in 2014 and acted as its Chief Creative Officer. She's been described by The Guardian as a digital female icon. Her session at ZMELT 2020 was titled The Importance of Creativity in Challenging Times. Let's get ready to melt with Laura Jordan Bambach. My talk, as you heard today, is about uh, the role of creativity throughout the last few months. Um, I've had a very interesting time over the last few months. I've obviously just uh, begun my role as Chief Creative Officer at Grey London, which has been incredible, but also, you know, a very different time, a different way of running an agency, a different way of doing creativity, working remotely, um, not seeing my team face to face and realizing that you don't even know, for example, how tall your, the, the people that you work with are. <laughs> um, or you know what the, what they look like what they look like in real life even though you're sort of dreaming about them at night so it's been a very interesting uh, time it's been a crazy time um, and I feel a little bit like a bandit or a pirate or something like that hence hence this slide uh, by the way if you want to message me at all uh, on Twitter I'm at Laura JB or at Grey London so. Let's get started. We are in the business of creativity, right? That magic where you collide different ideas together to get something new, right? That's what creativity is all about. It's always been my passion around, you know, solving uh, uh, a lot of the, uh, I guess, both the industry's problems and lot the client, you know, problems by really going out there and exploring as much as possible and bringing all of that together, right? Creativity is something that can change the way that people see the world. And those of you who've seen me spoke before, speak before know how much I'm passionate about uh, the idea of purpose uh, beyond or purpose beside profit for our clients and for our businesses. And because of that, just by way of very quick in introduction, as well as running uh, Grey London, I am also co-founder co of a number of different projects, all of which have been started through this idea of using creativity to create good, right? Because when the world is changing so much, the question I've been asked a lot and challenged myself with is, is there space for creativity at all? Um, one of the things that uh, really upset me at the beginning of lockdown, because I, I was ill with COVID very, very early on in March, um, was people constantly contacting me, wanting me to talk about what I was going to do with all my free time at home. What, I, what was I going to create? And actually, not only was I very ill, I was going through a job transition. And, and I think actually for a lot of people, there wasn't the space in their heads to be creative in the way maybe that we had imagined and, and hoped working from home might be. Um, the other question I asked myself is, is purposeful work now more or less important when our role as advertisers now is, it, is to get the economy back on track and to work with our clients to make sure that their businesses survive, where does purpose sit? The next question I asked myself, um, as I was saying, like what roles do we play in terms of rebuilding the economy, but what could we also potentially do 
in terms of leading the what what they call the great reset right uh, what the un is you know looking to now as being their focus for 2021 which is making sure that the world we build now is better than the world we left behind because we ha- do have a chance to reset and i think there's a psychological term called storming and norming um if you have heard of it which is in order to get to a new i hate the word new normal but to get to a new normal you need to go through this period of almost of almost a storm or a change and because that's been inflicted upon us actually there's never been a better opportunity to to really create in some way the world that we want to see and then the other question is how do you keep creativity at the core of the business when things get tough we know in terms of advertising not only is creativity the most important part but it's also the hardest to define the hardest to charge for sometimes you know it is the the powerhouse and the engine room of everything that we do but often when things are tough when budgets are small when timings are, are right when you can't film anything anymore <laughs> because you can't run a shoot when you you know uh, it's easy to put creativity to one side and just do what you need to do to keep going and this i think this idea of keeping creativity at the core of the business is the key to all of us coming out of this in the best way that we possibly can knowing that every single business and every single you know person and family and city has been affected in some way so as i said creativity has never been more important and neither has our role as marketers because no one else is going to get up there and get the clients businesses up and running and get the economy moving as we will you know to stimulate the economy to stimulate growth to stimulate spend actually gives us um i guess a role in society which a lot of people have often seen maybe as a bad thing or often questioned you know what what is the role of advertising anyway you know is it is it important are we selling people things that they don't really need or what have you but actually at the moment our role is very very clear and that is to help as many businesses as possible to thrive you know just being here in london seeing how many businesses are struggling in our industry in our clients industries walking down the high street and seeing places shut that will never reopen again you know there there's a very very clear role for us here and in a way it's not an exciting time because it's been a difficult time but it is a creatively exciting time for us and also some things have changed for, changed for good and i was talking with the great british diversity experiment about how bringing diverse inputs and diverse people creates more interesting work well you know all of our inputs have changed so the stories we tell we might never tell again i'll give you an example we work with uh, gsk and on one of their respiratory products for cold and flu you know the stories and this is for every cold and flu product the stories that have always been told about cold and flu products is you take a tablet to make make yourself good enough to go back to work and it's soldier on you know be strong go back to work that story will never be told again because that is the wrong story to tell in the wake of covid you can never ever say to someone again take a tablet and go into work while you're ill it's just not right so we need to reinvent these stories you know the story of the man or the woman putting his tie on drinking his coffee running out the door or her coffee running out the door with a lovely press shirt for whatever that story is gone you know we very much are going to see a big change in how people work and actually the move to remote working um as fast as it's been has been such a success for so many places um that that I don't think we'll ever go back to racing out the door to go to the office every single day so so it's it's exciting right because we don't have something to rely on those stereotypes are no longer there the other thing obviously is the way that we work right so um at the moment gray and wpp in london are 100% remote uh in the next couple of weeks we'll be going in and it's given us a really great opportunity to redesign what the workday should look like to really assess what people have missed and actually particularly in terms of the creative work why some of the work is harder to produce or slower or flatter because we're not with other people addressing that 
but not going back to how we were. So I'll talk about that a little later too. The next is about the craft and the media we use. Obviously, our, you know, the budgets are smaller, but the craft and the media also has had to change. No longer can we do enormous shoots with lots of people touching, you know, the stories, the stories around, you know, Christmas, which we're doing for a number of our clients. Everything has to be so we have to be so careful with everything. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of work that's been done through COVID um, and how we've got around those challenges. So that craft, you know, the reliance on illustration, the reliance on typography, the reliance on a, a, a film with a single cast member shooting remotely using, you know, using um, remote screens and what have you, editing remotely. All of these things are completely different and have really kind of shaken things up and brought not only sometimes difficulty, but also some really brilliant opportunity. And then finally, obviously, the resourcefulness and budgets. As I said, budgets have been cut um, and things have gotten a little scrappy. And in a way, that's exciting. You know, it feels to me a little bit more like rather than we are part of this marketing machine that's well oiled and almost you don't have the space for the happy accidents, suddenly we're more like pirate ships um, sort of heading out, thinking we're going somewhere and maybe ending up somewhere else. And that to me is really exciting, that, that feeling of exploration, although it's come out of hardship, has, I think, gotten us to some interesting places. You know, and as I said, there's so where we've got the stories we tell are changing, we're not able to talk about stereotypes anymore. The way we work has changed, but actually the collaboration, even though it's remote, has grown. So I am collaborating with and talking to more people at more levels at more companies without hierarchy than I ever have before. How we craft and the media we use, you know, it's this idea now of this the new places and new openness to ideas that we've never seen before. And in terms of resourcefulness and budgets, we're really bringing our tenacity to the fore and making the most with what we have around us. And actually, for me, it's made me appreciate a lot of things that maybe I'd, I'd forgotten, you know, in terms of the way that we work and the terms of what we do and just given me a chance to look out onto the world a little bit from afar through the, through the screen um, and, and maybe have a fresh view. So I'm going to take you through three pieces of work now um, that have been made in COVID, um, the first one is for the Gay Times for uh, Amplifund. So Amplifund is the um, uh, the charitable arm of the Gay Times. The Gay Times is a very large, uh, both kind of media platform and a magazine. But the way, so Amplifund supports uh, LGBTQ plus people in places where it is still very dangerous to be out. So places like Armenia, Iran, for example, um, and we have been uh, working with them for quite a few years now to grow this fund. But the way that we worked with them this year is, is, you know, has been very different by necessity. We couldn't take pictures of these people. We couldn't, you know, get out to these places to collect stories. Uh, we you weren't able to make any film. This was started, this was created at the beginning of lockdown where everything was very tight. So we relied on typography to tell the stories and actually they've come out very beautifully. So um, the, the other interesting thing is the media because Out of Home wasn't being purchased as much. Actually, the, the, um, the amount of media that we've been able to get for this campaign for free has been incredible. So we've got loads of Out of Home. We've got loads of press. Um, and the media agencies have been much more, or outlets have been much more generous with us than they ever have been. So this story is, you know, I felt like I was meeting myself for the first time. I realised I was asexual. So this is someone from Iran, and you can go in and kind of follow their stories and donate to Amplifund. Or trans people coming out is a constant thing. For trans people coming out is a constant thing. For trans people coming out is a constant thing. It was really interesting speaking to some of these people, um, you know, and just understanding. I think I think this is a universal feeling, but this idea that you don't come out once, you come out every single time you speak to someone or meet someone new or what have you. And then this, which is about imprisonment. So LGB is illegal in my country, being LGB is illegal in my country. And you get that sense of the prison bars and that kind of straining to 
to come out. Um, and we've also done an enormous social campaign here. So identity in our media, in Armenia, it can happen. All right. Uh, so, so again, talking about these ideas of, you know, LGBTQ plus identity and LGBTQ plus people and the ability to be out and ability to tell their stories and actually telling their stories in social through a really powerful um, typographic way but all done because the usual means of doing things weren't available to us. The next uh, piece of work, which is very different, is for Vodafone Island. So this is all done completely remotely. This is called The Show Must Go On. And we originally had four pieces of work which were in pre-production. We were about to go on the shoot when things were cancelled. Four lovely stories about how the internet um, can spark curiosity and can make wonderful things happen. When lockdown happened, we couldn't tell any of the stories that we'd planned. So we went back to the drawing board quite quickly. So each of the stories, the new four stories, and I'll show you my favourite, um, is all done with a mixture of projections and just one uh, actor. And this story is really, really lovely because the way that we've transformed it is it's a story of a young boy who was performing in his, you know, his end of year dance show and was no longer able to to perform because of COVID. So I'll play, play you this, but this, as I said, was all done remotely. So no one was in the same room as anyone the whole way through from, from the pre-production to the grading, you know, and finishing all the post, everything was done through, uh, through Zoom. Let your family follow their curiosity with unlimited data when you bring everyone's plans together on Vodafone's multi-mobile red family plan. You know, I've been looking a lot about how to put creativity at the, the centre of the business again throughout this reset. I think um, it's the thing that I've seen in the agency that suffered the most because creativity is based, you know, as I said, on bringing things together, the collisions, the conversations that weren't supposed to go anywhere that suddenly turned into something else. And so we've done a lot of work to try to create an atmosphere of that at Grey as well. So, you know, first of all, we've put a lot of structure around the at-home days so that you have a separation between work and home. You don't drift from one to the other. And there are certain periods of time that everyone in the agency has as non-meeting hours. So people have time to eat lunch with their family or to go for a walk if they need to go for a walk or to knuckle down and do work without fear of, you know, being called to meetings. We, we realized very early on in lockdown that because people were away from each other, they felt the need to have meetings all the time, almost to validate their role. And actually it's so much better to give people sort of that, that trust and that freedom to be working free of constant conversation. And now when we're going back into the office, we are going to be open to explore, you know, how things are going to work. We don't know how people are going to react. We don't know who's going to feel comfortable coming back to the office or not. But we are looking at a different kind of work day when, you, when you're there. So for the, for example, day a week when the creatives and designers, what have you, are in the office together to get that interaction, which we know is really important. We're going to restructure the day as much as we can to focus on collaboration. So inspiration from outside, inspiration from each other, everything we can do to fill that creative funnel, um, you know, sharing ideas, looking at work together, making things better together. Um, and then, you know, to really look at putting creativity first, because at the end of the day, our industry survives on creativity. I think sometimes we forget that in the, you know, sort of reach for big data or for, you know, sort of tech enabled uh, solutions to things. All of that is important too, but at the heart of what we do as a business and at the heart, very heart of what we do at Gray, it's creativity first. So looking at restructuring the entire business around what makes creativity work. And, and as I said, that idea of storming and norming, you've got to break something in order to build it. 
I think although we've not been able to choose the manner by which things have broken, we can choose the manner by which we rebuild them, um, both in terms of the world around us, but, but also in terms of our businesses. The presentation was followed by a chat between Laura and Anantranga Swami, editor of MELT. Here are some of the highlights from the Q&A session. The other thing that pops up from your Vodafone uh, commercial is uh, the need for, you know, uh, people to stay connected, you know. Yes. And earlier, the connection was going for a walk or going to the pub or having a coffee. Mm -hmm. And now we've got a new connected, which is going to be yes. on uh, instruments. How are you going to yeah. see a portrayal of people? I mean, you can't have a you know, commercial which shows a lovely walk down, you know. No, no. You know, Bond so Street or something. So we're doing a number of things. This, this idea of have, getting all the creatives together once a week as much as we can face-to-face mm. -face in a, you know, in a um, socially distant way, but actually seeing people's faces, I think, will become very important. Um, but then, you know, trying to uh, rejig what we would have expected of ourselves has been really, really important. So, you know, for example, I think everyone has had Zoom fatigue where... <laughs> You know, you're in meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting because of the distance, because you can't read body language, um, because you're staring at a screen. It's actually it's much more tiring to connect in this way than uh, than what it is if you were walking alongside someone or, or sitting in a room with them. So trying to space things out a bit and understanding that that with Zoom, we can't just keep on going as normal. There has to be a difference to the structure. So at Gray, we don't have any meetings after five, before nine, or between 12 and two. So that gives right. people... Yeah, can you repeat that slowly for yes, everybody absolutely. to hear? Yeah, I think so, that's important. Yeah. Yes, so before 9 a.m., 9 between 12 and two, and after 5 p.m., we have no meeting zone. So no one in the business is allowed to put a meeting in at those times, unless it's critically important. And that gives people time to stop and reset, to look at, you know, to look outside the window or to to go for that walk at least on their own before they come back into the virtual office. How, how do you get clients to be responsive to something like that? Do you tell all your clients that you can't do this as well? You can't call yes, my... Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And you, sometimes it's not possible, but for the most part, I think they want the best work out of their agency, you know, and I think they also appreciate the fact that we're looking after our people. And that was Laura Jordan Bambach sharing the importance of creativity during a crisis and how businesses will change in the post-COVID world. You can watch the full session and all other replays on zmelt.com. The VOD has been extended till 3rd November 2020. Now let's take a look at the Melt Cheat Sheet. Businesses need to reset by putting creativity first. Diversity enhances creativity. Businesses are now open to more collaborations and new ideas. With that, it's a wrap on this episode of MELT. Do follow us on social media. Our handle is ready to melt. You can also stay informed on what's happening in the world of advertising and marketing with our daily MELT update on our website readytomelt.com. And I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Goodbye.